What's up guys? Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another D5 render tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to check out the new vehicle and pedestrian animation tools contained inside of the newest version of D5 render. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first things first, this is a SketchUp 3D warehouse model that I've downloaded and then exported to D5 Render using the D5 Converter. Um, it's called Parking by Max Achofsky. So if you want to download that and follow along, you definitely can. But let's jump over into D5 Render real quick and just take a look at this. And I want to specifically focus on the Path tool right here. And so what we want to do is we want to animate some pedestrians walking and we want to animate some vehicles driving. So let's start by clicking on the vehicle option. What that's going to do is that's going to allow us to import a vehicle from our library. So in this case, maybe this one right here and bring it into our scene. So we're just going to click on this and then I just want to come in here and click to set a path. So notice how as I click, this is going to add vehicles right here. And so at the moment, this is adding two vehicles um, because I clicked in the middle of the lane right there. And we could go ahead and set this so that they turn the corner. But then I'm going to hit the enter key to be done with that. But now you can adjust things like how many vehicles go in a lane right here, as well as the density, meaning how many cars this is going to add, other things like that. And so one thing we might want to think about, because we can edit this path, right? You can click on the path and you can click on the button right here to edit this, is we might take these dots and put them in the center like this. So I can click and drag these in order to place them in the center. And then we could come back and we could add two cars in here like this. Notice how they are getting a little bit close to this central point. So what we might do is we might adjust the width out just a little bit using this slider. But notice how it's really easy to adjust this path inside of D5. And then say you wanted to like add a point in here, you can just click on the path right here in order to add additional points. And then you can edit those just like this. And that last one I want to get rid of. So we're just going to select this and hit the delete key in order to get rid of that. But let's say within the path tool, which I'm going to select again. And so let's say that we wanted to add another car model to this path, right? Because right now it's got just kind of the same cars over and over again. Well, you could click on the plus button in order to add an additional car model. So you just click on the plus button and then select another car from your library like this. Well, then what that's going to do is that's going to start randomly adding other cars in here as well. And so in addition, you can also set the direction that the cars are going using this option right here and you can adjust the speed. Notice how in addition there's also an option here for on the ground. This is going to be if you have um, terrain or something that's non-flat, this will snap that down to the ground. But you can see how you can use this in order to add these vehicles in here really easily. And then let's take a look at the character path tool. So I can click on the path tool and click on character and that's going to allow us to add walking characters. So for example, I've got this Nathan walking right here. Notice how the other walking models are a part of the pro version, which I don't have up and running right now, but we do have these right here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to select the Nathan walking model, and then we're just going to do the same thing where we're just going to click, 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 and then maybe right click right here. And this is probably a good example of a place where you might want to select that path and click on the on the ground tool right here, because you could see how those models were kind of under the ground over here because this is non-flat. So you can click on the on the ground right here. And then this works pretty much the same way. So you can click in here and you can move the points. So I could add a point right here and then click again in order to better align with my path. So you can come in here and make those adjustments. So same note on the actual models. So you can add the models just by clicking on the plus button right here and then selecting an additional model out of this list. Um, or multiple models. In addition, you can also adjust the width of the walk path 
using a slider right here. So notice how as you make it wider, people might walk side by side where they didn't do that before. So um, you can see how adjusting that is really easy. You can also toggle this so that people walk in one direction or the other. So it's really easy to add these animations to your scenes using this new tool. All right, so that's from in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about these two tools. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.